Chairman, if I might interject at that point, just on that note, I wonder if, uh, I know in the past when um, Eastern Gender has been likely to be a full agenda, we've been given a later start time. It would have been handy if we could have had that this evening to save us waiting for an hour and a half. Indeed, I couldn't agree with you more, Councillor Martin. We will endeavour to ensure it doesn't happen again. Uh, good evening, uh, councillors and members of the public. Before we commence the meeting, I'd like to draw your attention to the fire regulations which are on the screen behind me and should be on the television facing the public gallery there. Um, could you please ensure that your mobile phones are switched to silent and uh, please respect others around you and indeed on the committee. Uh, so we move on to the main items of business. Uh, members, the minutes of our last meeting have been on the table for the last 30 minutes or even longer. Um, are you happy that I sign them as a true record? Agreed. Thank you. Amy, any apologies for absence? Thank you, Chairman. Apologies from Councillor Paul Follows and Councillor Anna James. Thank you. Any declarations of interest? Uh, none before the meeting, Chairman. Any members wish to declare an interest in the matter before us this evening? No. Okay. Any questions from the public or from members, Amy? Uh, none received, Chairman. I know there's no relevant updates to guidance. Um, performance against government targets. Chris, would you like to briefly run us through those? Thank you, Chairman. Uh, yes, there's a, um, a table, uh, two tables within the um, within the addendum that show um, that show the, the performance against the government targets. Uh, the first one is the speed, the performance on speed, um, and on the bottom, at the bottom there, you can see that. Um, that we are we are exceeding the target on both um, both majors and non-majors, which is um, you know, which is very very good. Um, and on the second table, um, you can see there's the the quality um, indicator, and um, we are um, we're exceeding the or we're we're meeting the the target in terms of um, in terms of the quality indicator, whereby um, the 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 the, the, um, the performance is le is less than. 10% um, of appeal was dismissed for both majors and non-majors. Thank you, Chairman. Jolly good. Thank you very much. Um, just a note that should we decide that a site visit is necessary as a result of this meeting, that will be held on Monday the 10th of September 2018 at a time to be agreed. So we move on to the, uh, the item of business this evening is item A1, uh, application reference WA oblique 2018 oblique 0735 land at Branksome House, Filmer Grove, Godalming and the proposal is for the erection of a building of nine flats with associated parking, bin storage and cycle storage, a revision of WA 2018-0126 and Marie I'd like you to present the application please. Thank you Chair. Yeah, this is an application at land at Branksome House, Filmer Grove, for the erection of a building of nine flats with associated parking, bin storage and cycle storage. Members should have an update sheet which has been sent round. Essentially, this is an amendment to recommendation B, as in the agenda report, and additional information on the space standards for the units. In terms of the application, here is the location plan. Um, you can see Filmer Grove is to the south. <coughs> to the east, there are residential properties along Nightingale Road. And then to the northwest is the railway line. Here's an aerial photograph showing the location of the existing building here with existing parking and amenity areas here. And you can see that in relation to the existing development. This is the existing site plan and the proposed site plan. So you can see the proposed nine flats are to the north of the site here. And you can see there's bin storage building here and cycle storage proposed here. These are the proposed elevations. The building would be two and a half storeys, so the second floor is within the roof space. And it's a similar design to the existing building on the site with gable features. These are the floor plans. Apologies, you probably can't see them particularly well, but there are nine flats, so there's four one-bedroom units, four two-bedroom units, and one three-bedroom unit. 
here are some site photos. The existing building is currently in use as offices, um, although it does have prior approval applications for conversion to residential. There's two applications. One is conversion to 11 units and one is to 12. This is the site frontage <coughs> where there are TPO trees. This is the amenity area to the west of the site. And this is a photograph taken from the back of the site, so from the, the northern boundary. And then this is looking towards properties on Nightingale Road. In terms of the determining issues, matters of principle and technical opinion, the lawful use and loss of employment land, housing land supply, compatibility of use, impact on residential amenity, parking and highways, effect on the SPAs and biodiversity, and then matters of judgment, impact on visual amenity, impact on the setting of a non-designated heritage asset and the impact on trees. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Now, this, is, uh, this application is subject to public speaking, and I would invite uh, Anne Zook to speak on behalf of the objectors, please. Good evening. I understand the procedure has been explained to you. You have four minutes from when you start speaking. Thank you. Mr Chairman, members of the committee, I'm Anne Zook of Nine Nightingale Road, representing objectors. We were disappointed to view the planning officer's report particularly the way in which many of the objections raised have been nuanced in favour of development, or where compliance with planning rules cannot be met, bought off with a 106 agreement. The dilution of what is acceptable only leads to development which is against the national planning policy framework requirement for good and sustainable design. It is not enough not to cause harm to the historic setting of Branksome House. The MPPF requires good design to enhance historical assets. It cannot be good design for residents and visitors to cross the car park without a clear, safe path and then pass immediately in front of other residents' habitable rooms. Nor is it good to have a disabled parking spot remote from the building with no clear path to the entrance, nor a lack of space around the building. Similarly, positioning of the two buildings causes shading to each other, particularly to flats two and six. There is also overlooking down into Branksome, exacerbated by the high ceilings and tall windows in Branksome. SPD rules would require a rejection. On the question of the removal of trees, MPPF paragraph 118 is clear. A case must be made over and above the actual development proposals to justify the removal of the sycamores and the mature horse chestnut previously removed with impunity, or the development must be refused. No case has been made. Our counter is that the development is not necessary to meet Waverley's housing needs. The trees will be sacrificed for car parking. The loss of screening will allow the private garden areas of numbers 3, 5 and 7 to be overlooked. There is no space for mitigating landscaping. The position of the outbuilding at 13 Nightingale Road, currently used as a study, is dismissed as not being a primary habitable room. Primary has no validity. It is habitable and it falls within the 26 metre exclusion zone. The assumption that the sun disappears behind Frith Hill and does not provide evening sunlight to the rear gardens is incorrect. From the end of May until the end of August, there is considerable late evening sun. Photographs were provided substantiating this. The report is incorrect. The development is to the west of Nightingale Road, not the east. 
The proposals will extend the full width of number nine's garden and allowing for ground to finish floor levels and falls across the site will measure a minimum of 13.9 metres in height. This represents a 20% increase on the height given in the report and over 30% on the 10 metres shown on the drawings. The subsequent increase in flank wall will be dominant and overbearing when viewed from the gardens of numbers 9, 11 and 13. There is no drawing indicating the exact height of the building allowing for falls and its position on the site being shoehorned into a corner currently falls foul of the network rail exclusion zone. In conclusion, information is lacking on the application. The proposals are not of a good sustainable design enhancing the environment. Trees will be sacrificed for housing which is not required. The points considered insignificant individually take on greater significance when added together and importantly, the proposals do not meet the development plan. Ejection is surely Thank required. you. Thank you. Yes. Now invite um, Megan Rowe to speak on to, in support of the application. Good evening. I'm Megan Rowe and I'm C7 Architects Planning Consultant speaking on behalf of our clients Crestfield Properties Limited. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak to the committee this evening. You have all seen the committee agenda and your officer's report conveying his professional opinion. Your officer is recommending approval of the erection of a building containing nine apartments within the urban area of Godalming where the principle of development is acceptable. The site is sustainably located within walking distance of both Farncombe and Godalming stations and is a site which is listed on the Brownfield Sites Register and earmarked for development. Your officer has clearly set out in the report the impact the proposal would have on the amenity of the nearby residents and the character of the area and concludes permission should be granted. The proposed new building is set back from the road in a position that is not red, res, readily visible and given the relationship between the proposed building and neighbouring structures, including Branksome House itself, the impact on amenity is deemed to be acceptable. Indeed, the neighbouring properties in Nightingale Road are in excess of 30 metres away. It has been demonstrated that sufficient parking can be provided on site to meet the Waverley parking standards, ensuring no adverse impact on the on-street parking in the locality. We acknowledge the points raised by the neighbours and we have worked closely with your officers throughout the lifetime of this application and the previous submission to address those comments. We have made all amendments requested by your officers and the height, position and size of the building now reflects that which your officers have considered to be the best approach for the redevelopment of this important sustainable brownfield site. This has resulted in the officers' professional recommendation before you and we would note that if there is any doubt about this it could be easily demonstrated by a site visit should it be required. We respectfully request that you follow your officer's recommendation to approve the application before you for much needed housing in the borough. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Members, Councillor Reynolds. Um, thank you very much, Chairman. Um, in fact, I've just got some questions, if I may, um, um, which I'm not entirely clear about. And there's a prior approval apparently for 11 or 12 units on the main house. I was wondering if somebody could let me know how many, what the makeup of those units would be in terms of one, two or three bedroomed um, flats, I'm assuming. Um, the second one is, I've, I think I've counted correctly the number of car parking spaces proposed, but if someone could give me an exact figure, I'd be grateful. And then the third question is, I maybe perhaps anecdotally had um, understood or heard that potentially the, as part of this development where it to go ahead that the uh, approach road, i.e. Filmer Grove, may be resurfaced. And I don't know if that is something that forms part of this application or could form part of a condition where um, permission be granted. Thank you. Marie. Thank you, Chair. 
Just to come back on those points, the previous prior approvals, the one this year was for three one-bedroom units and nine two-bedroom units. And the one before that in 2017 was for seven two-bedroom units and three three-bedroom units. The parking, the, the current proposal is for a total of 36 spaces, and at the moment there's 37. And um, in terms of the access road, that's not within the application site, so that doesn't form part of this proposal. Um, it's privately maintained. Sorry, could you run through those, those flat numbers again? I, I couldn't quite get my sums to add up. Certainly, sorry, maybe I've done that wrong. Um, I think the, um, the one this year was for three one-bedroom units and nine two-bedroom units, so a total of 12. Yeah. Okay. And 2017 was seven two-bedroom units. Are you right? Yeah, that's 10. I think it's then four three-bedroom units, but I'll, I can check that. Apologies. Councillor Reynolds, did you wish to come back or was that...? Uh, I'll come back shortly. Thanks. Okay, thank you. Councillor Lee. Thank you, Chairman. Um, just one question to, to begin with. It uh, concerns the heading compatibility of use and loss of employment land. And the paragraph that I'm uh, looking at is on page 15, so that's right at the top. I don't quite understand... Um, the sentence, um, if the current proposal were to be built prior to, or even without the implementation of the prior approval, there would be an unacceptable conflict of use within the site. I don't understand this aspect of unacceptable conflict of use. F for example, why I'm prompted to come up with that question is, I would have thought that it was excellent news to have... Um, working space immediately adjacent to residential space um, because it could provide um, working opportunities. Um, you're certainly not going to be putting traffic on the road. The people involved um, stepping out of their houses and almost into a working environment are not paying extortionate fares on the uh, um, rail. And uh, so I don't understand this unacceptable conflict. If I could have an answer to that, please. Officers, Marie. Thank you. I, I understand what you're saying, and, and I do agree to some extent that um, you know to, to work close to where you live is obviously a good thing. Um, it's a very sustainable location. However, I think the the main concern in terms of the conflict is um, the scheme as a whole, so the parking and the amenity areas, and how that would work. The amenity area for the um, proposed flats wouldn't be immediately adjacent, it would be behind an office building and the parking, it would be sort of not desirable to have one parking area for the offices and the flats and how, how would that work in terms of dividing it up? I think that was the main argument from that point of view. Thank you. Councillor Lee, did you wish to respond? Um, no. <laughs> that is a, a rationale. Um, I must say that that doesn't counteract my own concerns uh, about the approach. But the other aspects that I'd just like to uh, comment on, and I do appreciate that because we do not have adopted um, room size guidance at the moment, then we've got to take um, you know, what the uh, officers are working with. But for me, going forward, uh, not to have as part of our policies the uh, technical space standards that have been published now for quite a little while to guide us um, in looking at room sizes and uh, the overall space <coughs> afforded for people's living, um, we are missing out on having some minimum standards for the health and welfare of those residents who are going to use the rooms. There is an uh, amendment, isn't there, uh, or it's, there's an additional information here which shows that um, plot number one, um, the one bedroom there, is uh, 41.7 square metres. Nationally described space standard is 50. 
The same um, situation applies to the um, plot number two. And then we have plot number three for two, two bedrooms. 63.2 is being provided. 70 is the nationally described space standard. And remember, these are what have been considered to be minimum requirements for decent living standards. And if we go on a little bit further um, to the uh, one bedroom, two person. Oh, no, there's another one, sorry. Uh, this is the two bedroom, four person. Yes, we've dealt with that. Now, it's only the three bedroom, five person, and there's only one instance of this particular design. 134.4 square meters of floor space is provided, which is wonderful. The recommended is 86. Now, that's a significant difference and certainly going to benefit uh, the people in that particular um, flat. Now, the other comment is, in the light uh, and outlook um, heading, um, we've got the close proximity of buildings mentioned. There will be a light reduction and possibly force use of blinds for privacy. In the parking and highways, we've taken this aspect. It's regarded as a private matter. Well, there's one thing for certain, going along uh, Filmer Grove. It's so potholed and everything that anybody with mobility problems just doesn't stand a hope in hell of being able to you know, move along that road. So therefore, certainly this particular development isn't take, as it exists, isn't taking any count of uh, people with mobility problems. We've got impact on trees. The uh, officer has determined some harm to health of certain trees. The housing mix, not in strict accordance with the schma. Bin storage, location, contrary to guidance. This particular application seems to distinguish itself by as riding on the edge of guidelines and, and acceptability and seems to have moved in the wrong direction. It's not as though there's just one thing that's perhaps not quite right. There's a whole series of things. And therefore, I do not feel that it represents a good standard, a good practical standard of design. Thank you. Councillor Holder. <coughs> Thank you, Chairman. <coughs> Um, the comments by um, the County Highway Authority <coughs> state that uh, Filmer Grove is an unadopted road and in a very poor state of repair, and they recommend that a condition be included that would uh, mean the resurfacing of the, 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 the road. And uh, as <coughs> Councillor Lee has pointed out, for people who have mobility problems, it would be a dangerous and not conducive to uh, public um, safety. So I think that should be included as a condition. It's recommended that it should be a condition, but I don't see any condition referring to former Grove. We'll come back to that one with the officers in a minute. Uh, Councillor Reynolds, you wish to come back, yes? I do, thank you. Um, OK, I think I'll start with the positives. I think this... this scheme is an improvement on the previous application that, um, that I, at least I had seen. Um, so that's good. But um, I think uh, I do have some concerns about this particular scheme in front of us. Um, I, I can understand um, that there may be a, some development on this site. I'm not completely against that because it, it is a fairly large site. Um, but I think this particular development, in my opinion, potentially is just a bit of overdevelopment. Um, I think that, um, as has been um, pointed out already, some of the flat sizes really are much smaller than they ought to be. Um, some of the housing mix perhaps isn't as ideal as it should be. And we are in a fortunate position in Godalming because we have pretty much got to our sort of housing requirements. So I think we can afford to perhaps be a little bit picky now. And um, I think in my judgment this particular scheme in front of us while the parking is adequate which is not something i often say and councillor lee and i often are beating the same bandwagon about parking but i think according to my sums it's probably about one or two spaces more than i would have insisted upon so that's pretty good but i just think the whole development is probably a tad over development in my opinion so uh, that is my position thank you thank you councillor bolton uh thank you chairman 
Uh, I'm concerned about the amenity space. I notice that some of these flats are obviously designed for families. There are four and five person um, families expected to live in these fairly small flats. So surely the families would like to get outside into the open air. Can officers clarify how much amenity space <coughs> there is, bearing in mind that we could have 12 plus 9, 21 uh, dwellings in total on that site, if the 12 uh, dwelling and the 9 dwelling both go ahead? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I have to say that, as far as I can see, the principle of development here is okay. So something will go into this space at some point in the future. I, I think I share the concern um, that has been identified with the, uh, with the space standards. I think it's a great pity uh, that the uh, floor space, apart from the, the large plot number nine with... Uh, uh, the three-bedroom, uh, five-person uh, uh, proposal. Uh, all the rest of them fall well below the nationally described space standard. Now, I am concerned because the, the council, Waverley Borough Council, does not have a current local plan policy uh, to require full compliance with these standards. So my question to the officers, if I may, please, uh, through you, Chairman, to say is, if we were to reject and use that as one of our objections, uh, what would be the position if it went to appeal? The fact that we haven't got uh, a local plan policy on this question, uh, would that put us into a position where we would be very difficult? Uh, and if an appeal were made, we would be likely to, be, uh, uh, to lose the case. Could we please have some advice on that? Certainly, officers. Would you like to address that and uh, a couple of other questions that have been asked about the resurfacing of uh, Filmer Grove and the size of the amenity area? Thank you, Chair. Um, resurfacing or Filmer Grove, again, um, whilst it's noted that there are potholes, etc., that is not within our control because it's not within the red line. The amenity space, there would be over 500 square metres, which um, is considered to be adequate in officers' opinion. There aren't any actual standards in the local plan setting out exactly how much you need, um, and that is considered to be sufficient. In terms of the technical space standards for the units, um, members are right in that we wouldn't really be able to defend that at appeal. There isn't a local plan policy in place at the moment. Um, it is likely to come forward as part of part two of the local plan, but at this point in time, it, it wouldn't be advisable to refuse on that basis. Thank you. Councillor Tom Martin. Um, if I could ask a question on that point then um, for officers, um, and, and I think it's worth noting, for, I mean, uh, uh, as a point to note, I mean, it says in the paragraph on the additional information, whilst it is noted that a number of properties would fall below the space standard, I think that's a bit disingenuous. It's most of the properties, not a number, all but one. Um, but it's the last sentence. The council does not have a current local plan policy to require full compliance with these standards. So what compliance can we mandate? Marie? That reference was essentially the fact that the floor space of the units doesn't fall substantially below um, and is still considered to, to be reasonable in terms of size for those units. So, so again, I asked the question, what, what would be... I mean, 17% is quite a lot, realistically. I mean, we're not... I mean, and I know the numbers are small, but actually from a percentage point of view, it is quite, quite significant. And, and I'd be interested to know what officers believe would be acceptable then. I mean, what, sorry, what, what, what would officers believe to be unacceptable? If a 17% or so drop is acceptable, I mean, how far below is deemed to be not appropriate? Because I, mean, I, think, I think it's important for us to be comfortable where the officers believe the line is, as opposed to where we are. Because I think there's a difference in judgment, judgment here. Um, and indeed, whether a judgment call can be called on this um, you know, I mean, whether, whether this is a technical um, 
decision or not on this particular point alone. I mean, and, and I think it's very important because obviously we don't have a policy, but ultimately then comes down to a judgment. And it will be very useful for us to know at what point officers believe the line is. Thank you. Marie, do you wish to come back and address that? I, I can briefly. Um, I take your point, Councillor, um, but it's very difficult to say. We would assess each application that comes forward at face value. I can't put a figure on it, um, but essentially at the end of the day, a developer would need to be able to sell the properties, so it's not in their interest to provide extremely small units that, that wouldn't be sellable. Councillor Lee, you wish to make a point? May I just ask, um, from the appeals that have gone before, where there have been national standards issued by the government, do we have any evidence that inspectors have considered um, those particular standards? I'm not just talking about uh, space standards, but the fact that they have been issued by government as recommended standards, do we have any evidence that they have been accepted even when there's not a local policy? Thank you. Not that we're aware of in officer's experience. Uh, thank you, Chairman. May I just come back about the amenity space? As I understood the officers to say there were 500 square metres available. This is for potentially 21 dwellings. I can do the arithmetic. It's about 24 metres squared per dwelling. And this does not seem very large. Um, and so I really have grave doubts as to about the suitability of this application. Thank you. I'm terribly sorry, David. Can you hear me now? The recommendation, recommendation A, is that subject to the completion of a Section 106 agreement to link the development with the office block conversion within six months of the date of the committee resolution to grant, and conditions 1 to 16 and informatives 1 to 5, permission be granted. Can I have all those in favour, please? That's none. Okay. Um, Mr. Chairman, I'm, I'm, I'm reading out the recommendation from the, uh, yes. the sheet I've been given. We'll be devising the clauses in the agreement. I have to be clear as to exactly what is intended to be achieved. Is it the commencement of development of both the prior approval and the development of this application that are to commence simultaneously, or is, uh, is it to be completion, or is it to be I, I, I think it's probably on... best if you ask your colleagues sitting next to you, yes, because it, it, it's not Chip. something that, that we put together, this report. It's probably worth mentioning that um, nobody was in favour of granting uh, approval anyway, so uh, we, 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 could, we could be moving on. Okay. Right. Uh, oh, right, yes, sorry. All those are against the recommendation. And abstentions. Could I have a, an, an alternative recommendation then, please? Could somebody like to propose that we refuse this application? Will this not recommendation 
No, the recommendation is something totally different. Councillor Peter Martin has recommended... Well, um, the, the key thing that I'm unhappy about is that the fact that so many of the... Of the uh, the we'll, we'll come to the reasons in a minute. I need okay. a proposal and a seconder, and well, then we yes, can look I, at the well, reasons. I'm proposing that we refuse, but I'm now Thank trying you. to get to uh, reasons why uh, we uh, should refuse. And, and, and it's been seconded by Councillor Reynolds, so now, if, okay. if you'd like to suggest some reasons the, for the, refusal. The, the prime reason from me is that so many of the apartments fall below the, the nationally described space standards. Four of them uh, are 17% below. Uh, two of them are 10% below and two are 5% below. One is well above. So for me, that's the prime thing. Um, I would add to that that I think the level of design is perhaps not as good as it could be and the level of overlooking into some of the other apartments is, uh, is another consideration. Those are the two. But I would hope that there are other members may have additional points as well. Chairman, can I, I mean, I'd say something around lack of amenity space, which could refer to not only the external lack of amenity space, but also the lack of amenity space within each flat, because we feel they're a tad, or some of them at least, are a tad small. I, I do recollect, and I've just been reminded by Amy, that I think in the past we've used a, a concern for the amenity of future residents, um, but I'm sure the officers can advise me better on that. Councillor Holder. Thank you, Chairman. Surely I, I agree with Councillor Martin. The reason we refuse recommendation A is we accept recommendation B. Recommendation B is the accept, absence of a completed Section 106 agreement. So, so it seems to be centering around the, um, the, the, the standard of the proposed flats and, and the accommodation that it provides. So perhaps the officers could give us some more or better wording. I, I, I think we will include as probably reason two and three or something the Section 106 agreement and the failure to. We, we've done that before now, haven't we? Apologies, Chair. Yes. Just, um, yeah, just thinking about. I think definitely, um, given what members have said, one reason relating to design, amenity, overlooking, etc. But then also, um, we would need the um, the reason in recommendation B as revised on your update sheet. Yes. Um, because there isn't a section one six. Right. I don't think any concern was made about overlooking, was it? By any of the members? I think there is. The, the one objector talked about the shading to flats two and six, and that is mentioned in the uh, officer's uh, uh, report, and they say that it's okay. Um, I would suggest that perhaps it's not. Um, we could perhaps add that as a thing, and I think uh, the general design, therefore, is perhaps lacking um, in the sense that uh, um, it, 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 it is not as good as it could be. Okay, then. Can I, can I suggest that the two reasons for refusal are the, the first one, uh, design amenity, overlooking, etc., as outlined by Marie just now, and secondly, um, the absence of a completed Section 106 agreement? I'm and surely the, the nationally described space standard, the amenity in that sense, needs to be mentioned, surely? Uh, I guess that would come under design amenity um, and overlooking. Providing that's very clear. In, internal okay. amenity, yes. Uh, it, needs to be, it needs to include internal space, I think. So, members, based on those reasons for refusal, proposed by Councillor Peter Martin, seconded by Stephen Reynolds, that this application recommendation is that this application be refused. Can I have all those in, in favour, please? That's unanimous, Chairman. Thank you. So, uh, we don't need to go to recommendation B, and we have no reason to exclude press and public, so I would thank you all for your patience this evening and wish you good night. Thank you.